think I'm going to call this donkey cart. Uh, and the reason for that is it's got one of Ron's mega donkeys for the controller. Uh, like most of my robots, it's made out of plywood. Uh, I design them on a CAD program, uh, print out the pieces on, on the printer, paste them on the uh, wood with a glue stick, and then use a scroll saw and cut out the parts and put them together. This is essentially going to be a line following robot. Uh, this will be my second line following robot and I hope it's a little more intelligent than the usual one. Uh, and this, the initial start on this and, and I guess the heart of it is the line sensor. Uh, it's a, a linear array of uh, 64 elements uh, right up here uh, made by uh, Texas Advanced Optical Systems. Uh, then right under there is, is a, a little lens assembly that I made and then uh, that little box has got a couple of LEDs stuck in from the side and it uh, illuminates it. Uh, got the software running to the extent that it uh, displays the bar graph of what the detector is seeing. And it looks like that's going to work. It's got a lot, a lot of software to go yet. Uh, in addition, well, uh, as you can see, it's a tricycle. Uh, back wheels, there's free turn. They're made out of plywood on eighth inch music wire. Um, got uh, brass tubing inside the wheels for bearings. Uh, the front wheel, also plywood. And this is the servo uh, mechanics. Uh, the electronics were gutted out of it, so all it's got in it is a motor and a gear crane driving this plywood wheel. Uh, the plywood wheel has, I think it's 28 uh, holes in it. And on this side, I've got a little printed circuit board. It's got a LED on it. And on this side over here, I've got another little printed circuit board that has uh, Folder transistor, and that seems to work. Uh, I'm a little surprised uh, the fact that the holes are uh, they're about a hundred thousandths and they're about three hundred thousandths apart. And you would expect that that would give little pulses, but it seems to almost give out a square wave. I haven't figured that out yet. Mm -hmm. That's the way that works. Uh, the steering is going to be uh, this is a stepping motor and it tilts the uh, steering. Uh, is, that a, is that a gear there? Yes, there's a gear up, up here and a, a gear to the stepping motor. Uh, that's a rather crude stepping motor. It's set seven and a half degrees per, ter uh, per step. And it'll, it turns out that the, the the steering is going to be a little less than one degree per step. Uh, I guess I'll comment on the printed circuit boards. I, I don't like to spend the money or the time to get my printed circuit boards. So uh, if you want to look at mine, they're not very fine lines on them. But the way I make my circuit boards is I take some tape and put on the board. First I scrub the board good with uh, uh, steel wool Brillo pad and clean it off. Then I put uh, some tape on there and it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference what kind of tape you use but I've got some tape that I got surplus years ago that's red and easy to see. Uh, then I lay out the printed circuit board 
on the on CAD program and print it out, stick it onto the top of the tape with uh, contact cement uh, that I got when I put down the tile floor. And then I get my X-Acto knife and I cut it, peel off where I want it to etch, and then I etch it. <coughs> and it takes me about a half a day or a day to lay out the printed circuit board about uh, Depends on the number of holes, but uh, 20 minutes to 30, 40 minutes to drill all the holes. And I drill those before I etch it because I can see the hole, hole pattern. And then I, after I drill the holes, I cut, I cut the traces. Uh, then I etch it. Etch it takes about 25 minutes. So after I've got the board layout, it takes about an uh, hour and a half, two hours at the most. Mm -hmm. to, a circuit board. And I've made some reasonably complicated ones. Um, I guess, let's see, anything else? Uh, I bought one of the H bridges that I hope will run this little motor. It's, I think it draws about, oh, at most a half amp. Uh, and right now I'm doing the layout on on a power board. Uh, I'm going to put it under here and it's going to have a, a switch on it for turning the power on and off. I think I'll have two regulators on it for 5 volt power to go to different things. And I'm thinking about putting a, a, a monitor on the battery voltage to see whether it uh, gets low or not. It's either that, or I would almost like to be able to have the thing charge itself, and so I may be looking for a better charging circuit. Does anybody know, I think, uh, uh, Maximum builds some the peak detector uh, circuits? And, you know, they've got some battery, they've got some battery charging circuit uh, chips that just do the whole thing. They need an external FET, and then they'll charge nickel monohydride. Uh, NICAD and lead acid. Just select Who's that one. Bomb? What's that? Who has that? Maxim. Maxim. I think it's Maxim, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm a, I, I spend more time worrying about things than I do building. <laughs> but anyway, that's my goal. Then I, I've got a circuit board already that drives the uh, stepping motor. It takes a step direction and a stepping pulse. Might also mention something that every robot needs, and that's a, a stand <laughs> that you can put your robot on uh, and run the wheels without it chasing you out of the room. <laughs> uh, I don't have any electronics hooked up to the motor, but I can run the motor. Uh, at least I think I can. Yeah, that's backwards. I think that's forward. So, I hope to be able to drive the steering 180 degrees, so it'll basically turn in the, turn about the center of the rear axle. I guess that's it. Let's see what it does.